Well, you're here, and it's not Incineroar, in fact, so I know one of your prayers have been answered. <laughs> I, I don't mind Incineroar. I actually like heavies, but I know that Incineroar is born from malice. <laughs> an actual <laughs> demon. It's but instead, you get an actual angel. It's Palutena time. Mm -hmm. So, character-wise, I think this makes the most sense. It's one of Mojo's most practiced characters, and this has historically been a rough matchup for Yoshi, although, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen a lot of this matchup since the 11.0 adjustments, I think the biggest one has always been forward air. Forward air allowing a lot of safe shield pressure from Pilotana lets her keep solid pressure on Yoshi. But now Yoshi has the ability to nair out of shield, and I think that's a huge change to the dynamic. Yes, but um, one thing I will bring up about the, uh, the Palu Yoshi matchup is that you know Suarez has played this numerous times with Stock Taker, so he's no uh, he's no beginner with this matchup. Oh, certainly. This is a matchup that I feel like Suarez has like forwarded the anti-meta game for. Like, if there's any region to know how to fight against Palu, Tri-State was the one to do it. Mm -hmm. And Suarez has historically been one of the more well-traveled players from the island. That all being said, Mojo's, of course, are uh, our homegrown multi-character uh, specialist. So there's more than just a typical Palu behind here. Ooh. Taking some interesting risks off stage there, but um, it looks like Mojo is uh, now putting himself in an unfavorable position as a result. He's like fighting from out far on the box, and I don't think it's a bad option because Suarez is struggling to kill him here, but he's not really leaving much of an imprint. Of everyone I've ever played, I feel like Mojo is one of the most comfortable players like off stage with his own character. He does not mind fighting off stage, and so he will take the risks that most players won't. I mean, he knows as long as he's not dying that he isn't dead. It sounds silly to say like that, but you just got to take your time with it. There's plenty of time on the clock, and even sitting here at a uh, deficit, it's not too heavy for uh, Palutena to come back from it. <gasps> that almost reached. Oh, my goodness. Dead? Yeah. And look at that. Relatively unscathed. Uh, only two and a half as the extra credit damage. Yeah, I don't even think that's like an egg's worth of damage. Nah. All right. Back air and air, but not finding too much more than that. Excellent DI from Mojo to make sure that he has, doesn't take as much damage as possible here. Oh, you don't want Suarez to make the most out of these hits because that's where it's so hard to bounce back. There was an opportunity there for the uh, the classic J Suarez jab reset, but I guess he opted for a different string instead, and it actually ended up working out because look at this damage piling on, and oh, couldn't get a any opportunity there with the mistack. Okay, but if that up tilt was any larger, you know you'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Button's already a crime and a half. Oh, yeah, 100%. Woo! What was that option? That forward air is just too, uh, too bold. Can't catch a landing either. The fact that Suarez isn't really committing super hard to doing much else is uh, actually a really good look for him here. Mojo's been playing, playing pretty smart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Until the drag. Yeah, yeah, no, I think both of their wires were fried. But regardless, <laughs> Suarez manages to come out on top in that situation. That's, a, that's the second time that Mojo's gotten that big up smash read, and it just barely doesn't reach. Uh, I guess it was just at the very edge of the, the laser's uh, hitbox there. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's a very tall hitbox, as to be expected by the Ray of Light, but yes. it is not particularly thick. Those safe eggs from ledge are so hard to punish, and uh, Mojo couldn't find a way to do it, and it looks like Suarez is going to get back to center stage as a result, and, uh, yeah, he's just going to attack on all this extra damage now. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I like it. Yeah, he's greedy. Yeah. Honestly, though, I wasn't expecting it, given how reserved he's been with his buttons this game. Yeah, he's been relatively uh, uh, calm and calm and cool. A little bit of a cucumber you status. You have to you remember know? that there's still Suarez behind that button. That's true. And one thing about Suarez that I always like to comment about his playstyle is that he is greedy. Like, really greedy. But nothing greedy about that. That's a tried and true uh, true combo. You know, throw it air up there. That stuff works. That stuff works. All right, so going into game two, I don't really know what um, I don't really know what Mojo 
changes here beyond the actual character. I think he sticks. He stick should stick him. Palu. On paper, he should stick Palu. I just, I could see him. He, okay. he needs a different approach of sorts against uh, against Yoshi because it looked like things were too passive. And in an unusual turn of events, Suarez was the one dictating the passive uh, tempo of game one. I feel like this is a like very, very, like, cliche thing to say about Palu, but I want to see, like, more Nair, you know? Like, I just, this is that, this is that good stuff. That's the 40% for free kind of good stuff. The problem is, is that at the early percentages, Yoshi's able to jump himself out, so it's not even guaranteed. It's good off the ledge like that, but it's a risky out of shield option because it's relatively slow out of shield. Mm -hmm. What I want to see more of is dash attack and bear. Like, make Soros really pay the price for these risky jump-ins. You know who, you know what Palo loves that stuff? Pong. He loves dash attack and he loves back air. Mojo is, uh, Mojo's more about, he likes run off stage there. Is, uh, that's what he likes. The drop zone there. You're like, honestly, like, if we were still playing, um, I don't know, maybe a year ago would be a valid way to play Palu, but she doesn't have the kill power behind the move anymore, and it's too reliable of a, uh, tool to take back space to really utilize like that. And that was maybe the most important reflect of the set so far, but it still left Mojo in a position to get eaten alive. Yeah, that was smart. I like, like you couldn't even really see if you weren't listening carefully. Like if Suarez had uh, had music in his ears, for example, you wouldn't have even heard the re the reflect happening. So. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm really not a fan of these uh, reflects. Like I get it. Like egg pressure is annoying, but. It's really not doing anything for Mojo, and I feel like it's leaving him in positions where, at worst, Suarez waits a little bit before pressing his button. Oh my goodness, what a read. What a read. He was waiting there for uh, quite a while with that up smash at the ready. Uh, that okay. sucks. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. You have the read and everything, and it just gets parried and just given just a tiny bit of percentage from down smash. That's tough. But it also is tough because... Oh, yeah, wow. Look at that. <laughs> it's also tough because uh, that down smash didn't work properly. It did It did a little bit of damage. It did. Honestly, it shouldn't have happened at all, but Suarez <laughs> still got something going. Yeah. Now we finally get a chance to see Mojo play the game after almost two games of just idling by. I feel like Auto Radical is something we need to see more of as well. Uh, I feel like that's such a good tool because the first one breaks the, an egg if he throws one. And then the second and third will do some damage. Uh, yes, I absolutely agree. The absence of auto reticle is very strange in this matchup. And I feel like the way that Mojo's been approaching this matchup with his tools is one of unfamiliarity, where like he understands that Palu beats Yoshi, but is not playing with the knowledge Ooh. of how. So it's really just more the fact that Mojo's a very good player using a good character, yeah. as opposed to good Palu Tena play. I, I, I think I see what you mean. Like, he's still, like, he, he's, he's been playing Palette for over a, like, almost a year at this point. Oh, but. no, this is a character that he's had for quite some time now. And so, like, I'm not dissing the character pick at all from Mojo. I just feel like his approach to this character currently is, I guess the best way I'd put it is out of date. Mm. Like, the over-reliance on Nair, I'm really just not buying here. And I don't know. I don't agree with you there. I think Nair is... Clearly, her best tool in this matchup, and uh, he should be using it more. Like, it covers like so many options, especially on the on the descent. And uh, yeah, Ugh, what was that landing? That's the second time that game that he that's, got a big that's ass a smash like this. <laughs> you know, a proper response in time, and that gives us the one-one count. Mm -hmm. And just as a reminder to folks, Winner's Finals, we're in the best of five territory right now. Oh, that's right. Doing uh, Winner's Finals, Loser's Finals, and Grands as best of five does give a little bit of room to breathe for both of these players, but it also gives them both time to adapt properly. So I'm curious to see what happens moving forward. Again, I really want to see more dash attack and bear from uh, Mojo. I think those tools are premium for denying the airspace from Suarez, both when he's coming up and both when he's landing down. And as for Suarez... I think his landing's more clean, because, like, Mojo is going to be able to rip you apart if he gets on you. Ooh, a nice emergency button there with that down B. 
I think uh, getting to the ground there was really important. How did Soros find himself immediately in control of the ledge here? I don't know. Like, Mojo's got to be careful about just giving stage space away. But Mojo manage. doesn't mind playing on off stage or in disadvantage. Like, he, if, he, if he could have his way, uh, everyone would just play off stage all the time. Because I think that's where he feels most confident. I gotta get my man playing Brawlhalla. He'd love that game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we were criticizing his playstyle last game a lot, but like it worked out for him in the end. And I think if he just relies on his his aptitude to have good reads and uh, good neutral, uh, things will work out in the end. Because Palu is a character that are, uh, neutral kind of plays itself. So I don't know. I'm not particularly convinced. At least in this game three, like immediately playing off the ledge, getting these little bits and pieces of damage isn't bad, but like, look at how much Soros is able to make each hit count when he does get a chance to play. Oh, a little greedy on that. A little That's greedy. Bad. No, my man is extending way too far with that one. He's got to remember, this is still Mojo he's fighting. Yeah. Ooh. Some nice movement, but in the end, it didn't amount to anything. And if we just find ourselves right on back to the ledge. Yeah. But he is good at, very, very good at fighting from the ledge. And so if he could just get one more clean hit, put this match back in his, uh, in his favor, the momentum back in his favor. Oh, again. Tried to get for that big up smash. Suarez loves his match. He does. He really does. And they're just about not doing it. All right, pressure closing in on this stock. Mojo needs to figure out a way to end out this Yoshi stock because this is still Suarez on fresh stock. That's a good position to be jabbing, but not enough. That didn't kill either? That's me. Yeah. Anyway. All right. That was quite an extended stock. I feel like uh, under normal circumstances, a lot of those moves would have been killing and something just wasn't working. Yeah, no, fair. Uh... I don't know, at that percent, I, I don't know, I guess he's just used in neutral too often, maybe, or just good DI from Suarez. Regardless, like, climbing up into that high of percentages, uh, kind of stressful situation for Suarez, but right now Mojo making good on having brought back the uh, stock deficit. Oh yeah, look at this, in just a blink of an eye, he's now caught up effectively. Uh, one more good interaction on his part, and he'll be basically, uh, in an, it'll be an even game. And you want to know what I think is really helping him in this situation? <laughs> We're finally starting to see Auto Radical put in some pressure. I'm telling you, man. Auto Radical in this matchup is really good. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Oh, he's got no... Uh, he had no options there for a bit, but... Mojo decided to give him the ledge. I'll get him next time. Nice. He's rolling in response instead of holding shield and trying to beat things out. What? That grab? Sick not, grab. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the other big change that I didn't mention. Yeah. <laughs> Such unfortunate sizing. <laughs> An iron will from Mojo. Not getting shaken at all by the presence of Suarez out there. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Like I said, he likes being on the ledge. He does not mind it. Um, I feel like he plays better from the ledge than he does from the corner of the stage, like with his feet on the ground. Oh, 35 big damage, and it's still going. Oh, nice patience. Suarez yep. fell for that once. Can't trick him twice. Oh. oh, no. Not the way we want to be seeing it, but mm -hmm. regardless, yeah. that's how Suarez is going to take a lead in the game count. 2-1 is the count. Was that just too low, or did he get, like, uh, I think he, he, he moved himself too far low. He wasn't yeah. close enough to the ledge nearly. All right, so let's get ourselves into it for game four. Figure out, honestly, this is taking a lot more. We're still uh, in Pokemon. Yeah, they're not changing stages. <laughs> there's, there's no reason for them to. I feel like the momentum would shift uh, out of this equilibrium that's been set of a very slow pacing match. And it seems like Mojo's comfortable playing it out, but he needs to 
be more of an active player in this set because I feel like a lot of where he's going off is where Suarez is getting way too greedy and overextending too far. And the points where he's losing out, barring the, uh, the SD that we saw at the end of game three, has really been from just Suarez pushing forward and forward and forward, continuously holding the ledge effectively. It doesn't even matter which ledge we're on, we're just going from one end to the other. <gasps> oh, That's cute! <laughs> that was cool. I that like that. Cool. I guess having Egg there to respond uh, in lieu of your positioning for... Oh. The reflector shooting back the stars! Oh, that's goofy. Alright, I still don't like the reflectors in this matchup for Mojo, but now I at least think they're cute. Wow. And at full distance, <laughs> couldn't get hit by the stars, but managed to uh, hit him with the just barely the tip of the wings. It's just not a Yoshi Bomb kind of day for Suarez. Uh, not, not in this matchup, but he's been getting it like pretty consistently before. Mojo's been reacting to those really well. Oh, one egg finds its mark, but it's not going to lead into an error or nothing. In fact, a bit of a roll reversal. Suarez immediately trying to uh, get out of that situation because he does not want to sit on the ledge with uh, Palutena in control. Nice set of back air not going to uh, make it happen at this percentage. Oh. Ew, what the hell is that angle? Terrible misinput from Mojo is going to be putting him in a position that... Oh, I didn't like that one. It's not, it's not too bad of a loss of momentum, though. That was already a pretty dire stock. It was, but I, Mojo has been playing off stage so confidently so far, but now we're, this is the second SD we've seen off of war. And it's just unfortunate to see. Especially his face is highlighted. Like, he's been really comfortable with playing off stage, playing off the ledge. And that comfort has really been displayed by virtue of him just coming back over and over and over again, regardless of Suarez being able to control the space. Mojo using, doing a great job of using all of his defensive tools, back air, reflect, and... Uh you know, he's even incorporating dash attack every once in a while, where uh, normally I would say he doesn't rely on it as much. Yeah, no, I... It's solid defensive play, but... <laughs> oh, that would have been so cool if the down smash connected, but instead he's going to die. Oh, no, the egg almost got him, too. Nair? Yeah. But that big boot will do it. That's crazy. Oh, Yoshi jump armor comes at you fast. What was that forward smash? <laughs> Sora's really getting greedy with it tonight. Glad uh, Mojo was able to close that one out without taking too much damage, because I feel like that stock was his, uh, rightfully his. Yeah, no, he, he almost had it, but literally Yoshi armor things, and then from one end of the stage to the other. Mojo's not, fair, not getting think. anything off of these down throws. I don't think that's true at all anymore. Oh, he restanded with the uh, forward air, but he just didn't do anything with it. Silly. This is why I wanted to see more bear. Bear outspacing forward air, I think, is really important in this matchup, and the fact that it does have that intangibility across the shield does give the opportunity for Mojo oh to be able to swing goodness. out confidently from disadvantage. Bear Vulture swinging. That DI was bears. straight up! It, it, it didn't feel like a great decision from Mojo that he was just willing to swing with Yoshi in those close quarters. Uh, yeah, because he I wasn't feel, getting as much. I feel like Yoshi was just forward airing, and yeah, uh, Pallet was just pack airing, and it was not working out in the uh, not a good exchange. Just overall, it felt like I don't know, like a like a breakdown in front, <sighs> I would think for a minute. I it's it's hard to see because I know Mojo's.